Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this episode, we're going to learn the triangle inequality and how to upper bound complex numbers. The triangle inequality is a very famous inequality and presented in probably almost every analysis class, probably ever. And here it is. It's mostly straightforward. It says that the modulus of a sum of two complex numbers has to be less than or equal to the sum of the modulus of those individual numbers. And this sort of makes sense when you start thinking of these things as vectors. Here I've drawn two vectors in the plane, z1 and z2, and I've also drawn their addition, z1 plus z2. Now the way a vector addition works geometrically is you start drawing the second vector where the first vector left off. So if I draw z1 starting at the origin, and then I draw z2, which I've shown right here, going off of the end of z1, where I end up connecting that to the origin represents the sum z1 plus z2. And what the triangle inequality says is that the length or the modulus of this sum has to be less than the length of the sum of the two individual vectors. So you can kind of think about it in terms of triangles, right? This distance, z1 plus z2, has to be less than going from z1 and then going from z2. This makes a lot of intuitive sense when you think that the shortest distance to something is the straight line between them. So if I'm trying to end up here, the shortest distance would just be traveling from z1 plus z2. That definitely means that going z1 and then going z2 has to be longer. Or in other words, this inequality has to be true. Now we can use the triangle inequality to find upper bounds for complex numbers. So using the triangle inequality, I can find an upper bound for the modulus of a complex number. Here, I want to find an upper bound for this modulus, 2z squared plus 3z plus 1, knowing that the modulus of z has to be less than or equal to 1. Now, I don't know anything about z necessarily, but I can figure out the, an upper bound for this, how big this modulus could be, using the triangle inequality. So let's take this, and if you think of this as being two separate parts, or even three separate parts, I could just kind of apply this idea two times. So I'm going to say that this quantity is less than or equal to the first one, the 2z squared in modulus, plus the second, the 3z in modulus, plus 1 in modulus. And this is just an application of the triangle inequality two times. So you could think of it as the first two as my z1 and the second as my z2, and then splitting it one more time. But this here, this is just one triangle inequality application. And now I'm just going to use properties of the modulus to say that the modulus of 2z squared is the same as the modulus of 2 times the modulus of z all squared. Right? The modulus is multiplicative, so I can take exponents out and I can break up multiplications plus the modulus of 3 times the modulus of z. And the modulus of 1, well, the length of the number 1 is simply 1. And now what I'm going to do is use the other piece of information I have, the modulus of z is less than or equal to 1, to make another inequality. So I'll say that this whole thing is less than or equal to, and I'll just plug in 1 now wherever I see the modulus of z. So here we have the modulus of 2, the length of 2, Two is a real number, its length is 2. I'm saying that the modulus of z is less than or equal to 1, so this is 1 squared. I have plus 3, the modulus of 3 is 3. I have the modulus of z, which is upper bounded by 1, and then I have plus 1. And so here we're just getting 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1. 2 plus 3 plus 1 is 6, and so an upper bound for this complex modulus is 6. Here are some variants of the triangle inequality that you can use for finding lower bounds of modulus as well as the difference of complex numbers. 
In this video, you learned about the triangle inequality, one of the most famous inequalities in all of analysis. We talked about how to use the triangle inequality to find an upper bound for a complex modulus. I also showed you a few other triangle-like inequalities. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you next time where we'll start talking about complex numbers and their polar forms. I hope to see you then.